Hi everyone, it's Meredith with Soul Navigation. I'm so happy you're here. Today I'm going to talk to you about May 2018's transits. It's a big, big month. We have so much going on and I'm going to try to get all of this out there for you because I want you to get out your calendar and a pen and write down these dates on your calendar because I want you to know um, about the energy inside each one of these dates and how to harness it. Sometimes when we get out in front of energy that's negative or kind of rebellious or dangerous or angry even, we can do some amazing things with that um, high impact energy where if um, we're blindsided by it, it sort of just happens to us. So I kind of um, like being in control of my transits. I like to know the good days. I like to know the harmonious days. And I like to really work with the energy inside the day. So today is April 29th and we're sitting on the Scorpio full moon. So I thought it would be a good time to do my May transits for you. So you could really align yourself with the energy inside the universe. So let's dive right in, okay? Um, this being... I've got all my notes here, so hopefully I don't miss a beat, but it's a ton, a ton of information. So sit back, get your drink. I've got my ice water with lemon. It is not straight vodka, <laughs> although that might be fun if it was. And um, let's dive in. So Uranus is changing signs this month, and that's a big deal. After eight years of Uranus being in Aries, um, it's going to change into Taurus. So on May 15th, Uranus enters Taurus and it is going to be a way different vibration. So if you've been in Aries or wherever Aries is in your chart, Uranus has been transiting those planets. Um, and if that's your sun sign, Uranus has been crossing your sun. Um, over the course of the last eight years, every Aries has been hit with this Uranus and Uranus is the lightning bolt. It runs on high, high electricity. It's highly charged. It's really rebellious and it kind of shatters things. It breaks energy up. And so it's also very innovative. So wherever you have had Aries in your chart is where in the last eight years, I promise you, you've had a breakthrough. And so I don't like for me, example, I don't have any planets in Aries, but it does sit up there in my 10th house, which is the house of career. And I have had a major breakthrough with my career and I feel lucky and blessed and fortunate. And so now it's moving into Taurus. So if you are a Taurus, um, Uranus is going to cross over your sun sign and wherever you have Taurus in your chart, that's where Uranus, the rebel, the lightning, the shattering of energy, the breakthrough is going to occur for you. So really pay attention to where you have Taurus. And if you have early degrees of Taurus, um, so if you're born right at the very first part of Taurus, Uranus is going to be sitting right on your sun. And I'm going to tell you, strap in and brace yourself because it's like sitting on the San Andreas fault line. And a lot of great things can happen, but it can also be just mind boggling and mind blowing and earth shattering. And it can really shake up your world. So get ready for major, major breakthroughs and breakups and um, energy dissipating, disseminating, I should say. So Tauruses could become a little bit less unstable, radical, rebellious, and they're not used to that because these are the stable people of the Zodiac. So it should be really, really interesting. I am guaranteeing you that your Taurus friends are going to start to feel really uh, rebellious and like maybe even feel like they have a midlife crisis or that they just want a whole new life. And uh, this is very unsettling for Taurus because they don't usually feel this way. Um, we'll talk a lot about that. We have eight years to talk about it. So on May 7th, Mercury, okay, the planet of communication is in Aries and it's going to square. So it's a negative aspect to Pluto in Capricorn. And this is a investigator day. This is a day where you can dig deep for truths and see the darker truths that uh, might benefit you or things that you want to know. This is like the CSI day. Um, it's a good day to do some sleuthing and get to the bottom of things. It's a day when truth wants to be revealed. Um, on May 9th, the sun is in Taurus and Jupiter is in the opposite sign of Scorpio. So the sun and Jupiter are in opposition. So this kind of brings you a potential opportunity for success. This is a day to ask for a raise at work. This is 
a really high happiness factor day. This is a day where everything feels like it can kind of fall into place and that your gifts really shine. Your talents can shine. They can really come out and be seen. Um, but I will say, if you are an indulgent person, um, if you if you um, live in excess, if you will, be careful with this day, May 9th, because Jupiter is that ex excessive planet and it's very indulgent. And um, if you let sort of your good fortune or your gifts or your talent or your winning of your lottery, this is the day to play the lottery, by the way, uh, you let your winnings all go to your head, it can really come back to bite you. So, and it can really even, this aspect can even lower your self-esteem and even um, embarrass you because you could like try too hard, do too much, be too much, say too much. Um, and you can overdo it to the point of loss. So let's say you're, I don't know, a race car driver. This is where you could overcorrect on the turn, you know, and use too much speed, wipe out and embarrass yourself. So it can be like that too. So be careful. So don't overdo it. Just step into the goodness of that day. So there's also a special note here that I want to say. Between May 10th and 14th of this month, this is this this is the hardest time of the month. This is the time where um, Mercury, the com the communication planet, right, joins up with that rebellious Uranus, and um, both of these planets sit in really negative aspect to Mars, energetic Mars, and this is a really risky time for everyone for potential arguments, conflicts, and even accidents. So be careful with your words, your actions, and, and your behaviors between the 10th and the 14th. We'll go and do it a little bit more. So between May 9th and 12th, with the exact conjunction, the exact hit happening on the 12th, let's look at Mercury and Uranus are conjunct, right, in Aries. And Okay, so Mercury and Uranus are conjunct in Aries, and they are both square. They are they are they are both square to Mars. Let me make sure I'm saying this right. So this is on May 12th. I gotta I gotta just go take a peek at this to make sure I know what I'm talking about. So yeah, Mercury and Uranus are conjunct, and they are in Aries and they square both Pluto and Mars. I mean, it's just really, really intense. And um, they mostly just really square Mars in a really tight square, but Pluto is in there too um, by a wider degree. So this gives us a really strong desire to break free from restrictions, any restrictions that are placed on you. and. You might even rebel against anyone who has a power over you or even a position over you, somebody who's superior to you or somebody who thinks they're superior to you. So be really, really careful between the 9th and the 12th, and it's exact on the 12th, to don't act rashly and really, really think about the consequences of your decisions. Really think it through. Because when you act impulsively on this day, it creates, it can create such a disruption for you. It's like life is a house of cards. It's fragile, right? There's great fragility in life. And so your, your impulsive reaction to other people pushing your buttons, trying to dominate you and have power over you, trying to tell you what to do, it can, it can really knock down this house of cards, if you will. So, and, and it can sabotage your happiness. So right now, between the 9th and the 12th, it can be a time where you're, that, that can be really dangerous with especially accidents. So be careful when you're driving and be careful when you're working with electricity and technology. So also try not to overreact to unexpected news. I guarantee you, you're going to have unexpected news. Um, you're going to have probably shocks to the, the system and you you are going to be surprised and shocked. And so try to, this is a crazy transit, so try not to just react. Try to breathe deeply, count to 10, calm the energy down, and this is a high anxiety time. So really listen carefully to your inner voice. This is where I say we can get in front of a transit. So on the 9th, make sure you set your meditation in place and download your meditation app. And when you go to bed that night, 
really, really meditate, you know, soak in the positive energy in your life and take care to not be abrupt and harsh and just blurt out what it is you're thinking or whatever comes to mind. You know, you can really hurt people's feelings right now and your own feelings can be really, really hurt right now. So just know that that it's a tender time right now, a time to really be soft and gentle and um, other people are going to be unreliable. You can't count on other people right now. So, and, and also they're going to be as easily annoyed as you are. So it's just an annoying time where energy is just kind of grating on your nerves. Traffic sucks. People are irresponsible, impish, rebellious, mean, nasty, blunt. Blah. It's just, uh. so don't have a really deep conversation on this day if you can help it. And if you do, come from a truly centered place in your life. Um, on the 13th, Mercury is going to enter Taurus. And this is a time when we really slow down and we can get into more of a state of calm. You might need to take a little longer time making decisions and you might be more methodical. Um, you're going to dislike being rushed. You're not going to want to make a fast decision. You don't want to give a forced opinion. So Go slow, ask for time, say, you know, I'm not positive. I need more time. I need to think about this. I need to figure, figure out my feelings. I need to figure out my thoughts. Um, let me ruminate, let me digest, you know. Also, you might be a little bit more difficult to, um, it might be more difficult to change your mind right now. You might feel a little bit stubborn. You might feel a little bit like determined, like this is what I'm going to do. Um, you also might develop a new concept right now or a new gift or a new skill. And this is a time to be really patient and devote time, time and attention to your projects and, um, your details. This is a time where it's less about mental brilliance and it's more about dedication and devotion. It's more about following through. It's more about showing up every single day in your kitchen to eat right, to lose the 10 pounds that you want. It's not about being um, ingenious around your new menu. It's just about sticking to the plan and doing the daily work. Um, you might also at this time fall in love with all things beautiful, including the arts. So mark your calendar for May 15th at 5 a.m. On May 15th, um, that's when we have our new moon in Taurus. And um, the sun and the moon are, of course, conjunct. They're together. And it's a time when you can really start a new big project at work. Or you can spend the day really um, committing to getting your finances in order getting your finances in order or organizing yourself or putting together a payment plan. Um, there are a lot of interesting aspects, though, to this particular new moon. So it's got a ton of complex energy attached to it. So I want to talk to you about what's inside of this new moon aspect, because it's not just all good. And I usually love new moons, but this moon is like a five layer cake. So let's look at this. On this new moon, um, the moon is in semi sextile to Venus, which is a okay aspect. It's very subtle, but it has a positive influence. And I like that. And it creates opportunities for both love and money. So you can take the initiative in those areas in love and money. So be proactive in your relationships and just simply give simple love. Um, and you can really heal old wounds. Um, so maybe just a hug and a kiss and a card will help put any of those past traumas and dramas with your loved ones behind you. Do something sweet. You know, Taurus is all about the sweeter things in life. So draw a bubble bath, give a box of chocolates, share a bottle of wine, give a hug, give a kiss, tell somebody, you know, you're special, buy them a blanket, snuggle with them, watch a great movie, light a candle. Little tiny creature comforts is really important. And um, there's big benefits for that. So the new moon is also trine, which is a good aspect to Pluto. So it results in having really, really deep experiences, deep and intense experiences. And you're going to have greater power to, um, to have influence over your own life, allowing and attracting really positive transformations to occur and to happen on this new moon. And you can also exert 
um, power over influencing others to reach their highest best selves. Um, there's real personal power in this Pluto trine, the new moon. Um, there's, there's a depth to this. So there's great emotional depth and um, great personal power with this new moon. So think about what you want to create and then put together in tangible terms what you need to do to create those results and then execute them for the next 15 days. So also on this day, Mars is squaring Uranus. Exact. So I want you to be careful. Um, you know, this gives you, you know, Mars, the god of war with Uranus, um, the rebellious um, breakthrough energy, the lightning bolt, the shock and awe. So when we have the god of war, also Mars just represents your life force energy, your chi and your sexuality. This can be a really impulsive time. And this is when like experiences can just hit you from out of the blue. This is when a tree can fall on your house. This is when lightning strikes. So this could lead to a lot of disruption and it also increases the risk of violence. And um, there on the positive side, if you get in front of it, it can be creative brilliance, it can be scientific breakthroughs, but you should really avoid taking any kind of big, big risks, especially risks that put your life in danger. So, um, and I don't mean like getting on an airplane. I mean like weaving in and out of traffic in a really fast car. I'm going to need to take my own advice. <laughs> so there's also like a lack of concentration on this day. There's like, we don't want to pay attention to the details where we have a restlessness. We just want to get to the bottom line. We don't want to spend a lot of time um, dilly dallying. We don't have patience. We don't want to wait in the back of the line. We want to take cuts. We want to get there, go, you know, and so it's a time when our own impulses can really just mess us up big time. And it's a time when we can just um, want to take all the shortcuts and not um, want to pay our dues or put serve time or put our time into anything. So be really careful with that. OK, and wear your seatbelt. So the next the next transit that's happening inside this new moon aspect is Jupiter trines. Neptune, and I actually love this transit. So it, it doesn't reach its full potency until the 25th of May. And I'm going to come back and talk about this transit because it's huge. But it does, it is helpful with this new beginning, new time, new moon. Um, and the new moon is always a birth and a creation of a new idea, a new concept, a new chapter, a new chapter in your year. It's when you are planting new seeds. And so when Jupiter is sitting in harmony with Neptune, it, it, it lends us great hope and generosity and um, sort of um, a community of spirit. And you might even take a, um, you might go under, you, you, you might, I should say, you might be on a spiritual quest at this time too. And your personal value system or your morals might reach a higher standard. Um, and you'll find that being really selfless is easy for you, giving yourself to others. So this is happening simultaneously to that other aspect that I was talking about um, with Mars squaring Uranus. So you can see how this is complex and I'm excited to hear where it's gonna land in your life. Like what's May 15th gonna bring you? Cause it's got tons and tons of energy in it. But social justice also becomes really important. Look for that in the world. Um, and you, you are going to feel like there's some big juicy fruit in this new moon, just based on this part of the transit. There's some really good juicy fruit in it. We'll go back to that transit because it hits exact on the 25th and I want to talk about it. But another thing sort of happens uh, or another thing happens at 9 a.m. So the new moon happens at 5 a.m., but at 9 a.m. on the 15th, um, Uranus enters Taurus. Now this is kind of, you know, bizarre. And I talked about this at the beginning where Uranus is moving out of Aries and into Taurus. And it's kind of odd because Taurus is so stable. And then when you're Uranus, the lightning bolt shocker, you know, rebellious, um, kind of harsh uh, planet, 
enters stable Taurus, it's like, whoa, what's going on? So what's interesting is I think that you're going to be able to really have, now it's not just on May 15th because it lasts for years and years, I think eight years, but it, uh, I have to double check that. So mm, I don't know for sure, but it lasts a very long time. Um, I got to get the exact timeline for that. I should know that, but um, I want to look that up like when it leaves when it leaves Taurus and then it goes into Gemini. But in business and in practical matters, you can have a lot of breakthroughs and you can implement new ideas. Very like you can have breakthroughs around pragmatics, around anything that you can touch the material world. You can have breakthroughs around money and you can have breakthroughs around love as well. You can really implement scientific ideas or new improved concepts and ideas to the pragmatics of your life. And so you will find that um, you might be able to actually make life more comfortable and um, you might be able to really improve all your systems and structures that run your household or run your business or run your life. So let's move on. On May 16th, Mars moves into Aquarius. And I really like Mars and Aquarius, to be honest. I do. Um, the energies are going to be, your energy might want to just pop out and be expressed in this like really original and unique and exciting way. You might feel like, you know, my energy wants to kind of rebel. I kind of want to step outside of the box. I kind of want to you know, not do the same old, same old. I want to mix this up. And um, it's like that famous quote, we all live under the same sky, but we don't all have the same horizon. So it's where do you want to be unique? Where do you want to individualize? Where do you want to be gutsy and risky and go for it? Using your energy to be different, unique, individuated, gutsy, um, sort of your own person, and experience freedom, not be trapped by social stigma. Um, and if you want to learn more about that Aquarius energy, go check out my Everything Aquarius video or the Madness and Genius of Aquarius Rising. And when Mars moves into Aquarius, it's like we all kind of get a little bit of a bump. Um, a bump up to live more boldly. And so I really like Mars and Aquarius. I think it's fun. So on May 16th, I wrote in my notes, be careful, because that Mars and Aquarius um, does square Uranus in Taurus. And it, it um, let me just look at this. I want to go back and look at the transit really quick. And, you know, when whenever you're working with uh, Uranus, uh, whatever you think is going to happen, isn't what's going to happen because it's completely um, unpredictable. So if you're being careful over here, but you're not paying attention. So if you're being careful driving in the car, not text messaging, um, but you forgot to turn the oven off, right? So just be cautious and careful in everything you do in signing contracts and using your physicality and driving and anything that could be dangerous. Yes. Yeah, so um, here we are on the, let's see, yeah, the 15th and the 16th, Uranus squares on Mars, yep, on the 16th. And so you, this is again, where you have a tendency to act rashly without regard for the consequences and it can lead to just disaster. So I want you to be really aware of this dynamic energy. And instead of it being violent in your life, I want you to get in front of it and drive it so you can have an inventive, creative breakthrough with it. And you can feel reinvigorated in your personal life because that's what it does at its highest functioning level. And so if you can embrace that, if you can embrace your energy and use it to its highest, best, fullest potential and get your mind centered and aligned and don't be impulsive, you might find that there's an area in your life where you can just tear up the rules and have some fun. So. You, you really aren't going to be able to restrain this erratic energy. So you might just want to get in front of it and express your crazy, creative, inventive side in sort of a safe environment. Um, and if you have kind of a, a structured, hierarchical workplace, then you should find a creative outlet socially 
or sexually or through a hobby that you can be, you know, expressive and innovative, a safe person or a safe place. But this is where you really will want to be kind of different. Um, you're going to want to, you know, make your own mistakes and learn and grow from them, of course, and nurture yourself when you do make mistakes. But it's sort of um, a time when if you had a bestie, you know, go get wild and crazy with your bestie and have so much fun. Um, you want to get your dangerous desires out or your kinky desires, if you will, because Mars and Aquarius is really kinky, but, you know, in a safe way or with a safe person. And so I just want you to know, though, that there can be a lot of cre creative brilliance and breakthroughs um, with this transit, but you should avoid, avoid impulsiveness, right? Or dangerous people. And just remember, this isn't a time where, we're, where, we're, where it's really easy to concentrate intensely. So you kind of have to step back and um, make sure that you're extra patient because it won't be easy to do because you're just going to want the bottom line answers and you're going to want to rush and you're going to want to reach the goal right now. And the goal probably isn't possible to reach right now. So you got to take a deep breath and work, work through it. So May 19th, I really like because Venus enters cancer and Venus likes being in cancer. So, you know, you might prefer to stay in rather than go out even during the weekends. It might not be a big party time for you. And this is the time to really cultivate healthy, happy family relationships and even build a new family. This is a time when you could get really serious with a loved one or talk about moving in together or talk about sharing your family or talk about what their, your partner's children's needs are or really embrace a child. Um, this is a time when you could get pregnant or want to be a mother. Um, this is a time when it's very easy to nurture other people and make great um, homemade meals, um, you know, cook your favorite recipe, like yummy lasagna with extra cheese. Um, now that is on the 19th, but also on the 19th, Venus in Cancer, right? Venus moves into Cancer, but it also is in a harmonious aspect to Uranus and Taurus. And I love the Cancer-Taurus combo. I think that is one of the very best combinations of signs. So Venus in Cancer and Uranus and Taurus in happy aspect. So this is a great time to make new friends and make new lovers. You know, this, this is um, a transit that actually leads to like a shortcut, right? Uranus, I just told you about it. And Venus is love, a shortcut to the bedroom. And it's like um, this aspect really favors a quick, fast fling or um, it's not a marriage transit. So if you meet somebody on the 19th, it's probably not a marriage partner. If you already know them, that's a different thing. And you could actually have, <laughs> look at me. Oh my God, I've had such a long day. Forgive me. I'm just like rolling through this video. But you know, when, when you have Uranus and, and, and Venus together in this harmonious aspect, it's like, no harm, no foul, but it's sort of a case where people feel naturally free, free to explore, and they don't want to be smothered. They don't want a lot of rules and responsibilities. Um, they don't want to be smothered with love and affection, but they do want to have a good time. And so it, it, it can be a time for true love, but it's probably going to go really, really, really fast. You're probably going to hit the sheets fast, or you're going to hit the, um, the, the peak very, very quickly underneath this aspect. Um, and if one person is more traditional and the other person is more free, it's almost like this is kind of a safe time for the traditional person to break free and experience what the non-traditional person desires and dreams and wants. So it's a good aspect to take risks that way with, with your love, um, or with somebody who's even a potential love. So on the 21st of May, we have to say happy birthday to our Geminis. And you're going to see that the energy really lightens up and it gets kind of happy. Mm. It's kind of like Peter Pan, right? 
And um, the energy gets curious and fun and sociable. And now we're wanting to leave the house, if you will, and go play. And it's um, uh, it's going to be, you're just going to feel like summer's here. You know, it's a fun time. Um, I hope it's a sunny day in Seattle, but wherever you're at, because it's just a fun, sociable, sunny time. Find a sunny patio and get an icy cold drink and have a lot of friends and throw a party. It's a time for networking. On May 24th, the sun is in Gemini, and then it's in that happy aspect to Mars and Aquarius. So it gives us a lot of self-confidence and enthusiasm, and it's an ideal time to start new projects, make new friends, go out with people. You're feeling strong and courageous to initiate and get the ball rolling. This is when you're going to be moving and grooving, tackling really difficult tasks with great ease. You can easily impress somebody, especially somebody um, at work or in your personal life. You have increased, um, you have a really increased sexual desire, a sex drive, and it's matched with kind of a charisma and a magnetic charm. So it's a great time. This is on the 24th of May. So mark your calendar. You know, it's like a sexy confidence that you'll just ooze and you'll be especially attractive at this time. And so you should, you know, you, it should be really easy to get your, your desires, your most passionate desires fulfilled and exalted, if you will. So that's a great day. Mm -hmm. You're also able to understand what's really motivating you at this time because you're going to have a real conscious desire, a conscious awareness of your primal desires. It's like they bubble up to the surface and you just know what you want and it's easy to get. And um, you're going to feel a really strong urge to just take action under this transit and go with your instincts. It's a winning transit. So set yourself up for a great May 24th. Now, I want to go back to that Jupiter in Scorpio transit, um, that Jupiter in Scorpio in that happy aspect to, to Neptune and Pisces. And this transit is big and beautiful and it increases hope and generosity and even community. And you're probably going to find the desire to go on a spiritual quest and go deep within and then share your energy with others. And so others can come to you for spiritual guidance or help. This is a time when you could really also want to turn to your priest or your guru or your psychic or just your intuitive, your most intuitive friend. Um, and you, those encounters might even be destined. You might meet new people who play out those archetypes in your life. And enlightenment can actually come to you during this time through your dreams, through your visions and through your meditation, through your walk through life, you can become enlightened. You can actually become unshackled from the burdens of your ego. So your ego is here to protect you. It's here to um, help you survive life. But our ego goes wonky and our ego makes us play it either too safe or too bold. Our ego is very rarely ever in perfect harmony or check with our soul. And under this aspect, you can get your ego in check. You can tell your ego, hey, back off. You're actually overprotective and you're ruining my life. Or you're preventing me from having the kind of life I want. So this is a time when your ego can just get into check and get healthy. And when you have a healthy ego, you can reach enlightenment. Very few people that you and I know are enlightened. Very few. Mother Teresa, Gandhi, um, Nelson Mandela, Florence Nightingale, those souls were enlightened. And so this is a time when, when you step into your highest, best, truest desires and self, and you don't let ego run your show, you can forgive your past and you can step into true, true forgiveness, and you can become so aware of what it is you deserve and desire and how you can most help and benefit the world. So, you know, this is a major, major planetary aspect, and it's going to start on May 10th. It comes to full culmination on the 25th of May, and then it goes through June 12th. I kind of like to call it my Habitat for Humanity transit. 
because it's a time when your gifts and your skills and your wisdom benefit self and benefit others. It's you helping others actually fulfill your life to an exalted degree to the point that you could create pure enlightenment. And so I just absolutely love this aspect. It, its purpose is to seek and understand the ultimate truths inside of you and inside of others. And there will be destined encounters during this time too. So whoever you meet during this time or whoever you spend time with can really help you shape shift your life. So others um, can, you, you'll find that others who are less aware in your life can be inspired and empowered under this transit too. And your personal morals and your personal values reach a higher standard. You play at a selfless level. And when you help others, you actually heal self. So your charitable nature just extends to the environment, to the, the tree, to all living beings, from trees to flowers, to animals, to plants, to self, to humans. And um, you will also see that there might be victims or people less than you that are in need, that your enthusiasm to help them can really change their lives. lives. So some people also find that this is a really strong creative urge that bubbles up inside of them too. Um, music, art, dance, drama, spirituality. So you can follow your dreams under this transit with success without really, um, without, how do I say this? Without tremendous effort, with great ease actually. And it's a time when you can feel really contented with yourself and happy. Romance is so likely at this time. And it's like your partner could become really mysteriously attractive to you. Um, and you might meet a new partner. So let's see, we're on the 26th. And this is, this is a little bit of a harder day. Venus and Cancer is opposing Saturn and Capricorn. So they're opposites. So you've got Saturn um, and Saturn is the karmic lesson and it's the oppressor, the suppressor and the repressor is in opposition to this beautiful and sensitive Venus and Cancer. And so it might be a sad day. It might be a day where you bubble up loneliness bubbles up and there may be like delays and limitations placed on you with your love life and with your finances as well. And it's, it's not a great time for socializing. You might feel blue or down. You might feel like you're pressured by loved ones. Um, and you might be trying to address your relationship problems and, and it could only get worse. You know, it might get worse before it gets better. It might t completely fall apart. Um, the best thing that you can do right now is just show that it is just to work work diligently and take care to work hard to do the practical, pragmatic things. And your efforts will probably even be ignored, um, but they'll probably pay off in the long run. So try to stay responsible, try to stay calm. Um, there might be some relationship difficulties and there might be some self-development that needs to occur right now. You might need to really do some work for yourself. You might need to go into therapy. You might need to you know, work with a counselor or go deep within yourself and reflect and find your truths. Um, it's, it's a time to really pay off your debts as well, because you could really get into debt under this transit and you want to be organized around your finances and around your love. So if you're feeling depressed on this day, just know it's not going to last. Um, but it might be kind of a low day or a blue day. And it's not going to last long, but some people can feel sad or you might get sad news around a loved one on that day. So going forward, the, the full moon this month is on the, in May is on the 29th and it's in Sagittarius. So if you are Sag, it's a time when emotions run big and um, the sun is in Gemini and the, the moon is in Sag. And so it's a full moon and it's a good day and night for a spiritual experience that transcends, um, I guess, our perception. Be open to having a new perspective. Be open to having your mind be changed. Um, it's, it's asking those who are very pragmatic to maybe see the bigger picture and to 
set goals that feel like a vision, if you will. And it's really good right now to study different cultures and traditions and be free of attachment, be free of outcome, live in the now. Um, you know, it's a time to also listen to, I guess, the wise words of elders and gurus, those who know more than you. You can, ex you can ex I guess, expect a sort of a strong opposition, if you will. So if you're going to enter a contest or if you're going to play in on a team or in a game or on a tur tournament, you might lose on this day. Um, but obviously there's going to be one winner and one loser. But, you know, you can gain a lot from this full moon. You're basically supposed to eliminate truths and routines that an excessive data that no longer benefit your life and um, get realistic about what is it going to take to succeed and get rid of everything that does not help you succeed in this life. Um, and that full moon is a day of losing something. So it's probably losing to fixed ideas and opinions and perceptive perceptions that and perspectives that no longer help you um, reach your goals and really getting in touch with the truth of what is it that you really want? I mean, do you really want this friendship that doesn't serve you, that's catty, that undermines you? Or do you want to let that friendship go? Do you really want this job that is mundane and just has you on a gerbil wheel? Or do you want to pursue a truer passion and get paid for it? So get in touch with uh, the truths that live inside of you and be willing to lose the stuff that doesn't benefit your passion. So moving forward on the 29th of May, this is my last transit, Mercury is going to enter Gemini. So Mercury is your communication planet and it is your mind. So Mercury is the ruler of Gemini. So this feels like a great takeoff day. You know, this, this aspect, this planet when Mercury is in Gemini, it just feels great. It feels like, gosh, I've got enthusiasm and ambition and curiosity. And it feels a little bit like Tigger in Winnie the Pooh. You know, I want to learn everything. I want to communicate better. I want to read. I want to know. I want knowledge. So also like short little trips and three-day trips. And, um, you know, it's like uh, learning new things and taking trips where you can learn it, it is going to be so much fun. Maybe you go to, I don't know, you go to a day trip and um, you, like in Seattle, maybe you go to Mount St. Helens and you learn all about Mount St. Helens and volcanoes. So it's kind of like travel and learning and knowledge and curiosity and movement is um, really wanting to happen right now. And it's a great day for absolutely brilliant communication. So give a speech, have a hard talk, um, have the birds and the bees conversation with your children. This is a time where you can both learn and communicate simultaneously. And so that's the month of May. And um, it is going to be really dynamic, very complex. You have lots and lots of stuff going on. I think my favorite aspect um, this month is going to be that Jupiter-Neptune aspect and um, I just encourage you on your spiritual quest. If you have any questions, please write your comments below. I'm happy to answer anything I can. And if you like this video, please go check out all my other videos on this channel. I try to do them faster, but I'm going just as fast as I can. I have a super big practice. If you'd like a reading, you can book a reading with me anytime. I do have a little bit of a wait, but be patient with me. I'll get to you as soon as I can. You can book online at soulnavigation.com. I have an online schedule. You can um, choose your date right now if you would like a reading on love and relationships or what is your soul's calling. If you have any problem in life, we can look at it and make better, make it better. And i um, just so happy to share this with you. Take good care. And I look forward to seeing you in um, for my June transits next. Take care. Bye.